If you want some freedom, come get the truth. Amen. All right. This is what I need you to do. I need you to gather in your Bibles, your cell phones, your tablets. And we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Just one verse I'm going to read and uplift before you. Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to look at uh, verse 18. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version. Doesn't matter what version you have, we'll all end up in the same place. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. When you got it, say, I got it. If you don't say it's on the screen, it's on the screen. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says this. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Amen. I'll read that one more time. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. Somebody say helper. A helper suitable for him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to teach this morning from the topic, every family needs help. Every family needs help. Every family needs help. Needs help. Somebody say it with me. Every family needs help. This morning, I want to continue a powerful, polemic, and hopefully cogent series titled Home Improvement. A series that we've been into called Home Improvement. A series to help our families make the necessary changes to having better homes. Thank you for that clap, Larry. As I stated throughout this series, if you want to see improvements in our society, if you want to see improvements in our churches, if you want to see improvements in our world, it starts with making improvements in our homes. Ladies and gentlemen, our society, our church, our world is only as strong as our families. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been with the Troop Church for two weeks, two months, 15 years, 20 years, doesn't matter. Amen. You know that one of my favorite books of the Bible is Genesis. Specifically, the creation narrative, because in it, we see God's original intent for human beings before the fall. Amen. Hmm. Amen. I use the book of Genesis to argue with your philosophy, to argue with how you feel. I don't want to hear about how you feel. I want to know what God says. I don't care what the government reshaping the identity of marriage. What did God say? I go back to Genesis. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you don't want to deal with male or female. What did God say in Genesis? What was God's original tip for marriage? What is God's original tip for human beings? All that is found in that creation narrative. That's why it's going to always be one of my favorite books in the Bible because it shows God's original plan. Because what we see in Genesis is God's original intent for the family. In other words, what we see is God's idea, ideal, yes. not our ordeal. Y'all not hearing me this morning. What we see in Genesis is God's ideal. Somebody say ideal. ideal. Not our ordeal. What do you mean by that, Pastor? See, I'm so glad you asked. When I say God's ideal or his ideal family, I'm referring to what God wanted the family to look like. 
that when he was sitting up from heaven, looking down on earth, what he wanted to see our families look like. What was his idea look for, for a family? And his idea was what? One man, one woman, and one set of children. Don't get mad at me because your family don't look like that. We're going to deal with that in a minute. I'm telling you what God wanted to see. God wanted to look down in heaven and see one man with one woman for the rest of their life Amen. till death do they part because that's the, that's the vow you made when you walked down that aisle till death do us part. That's what he wanted to see. A marriage tangled together in God forever until, until death do this part. And they produce one set of children. Not a set of children over here, not a set of children over here, not a set of children over there. One set of children coming out of that union. Yes, right. They get mad at me already, Courtney, because they know they don't look like that. Right. I'm telling you God's idea. You still celebrating our ordeal. Right. What we see in the churches across America, in the homes across America, is the ordeal. Right. Our ordeal. What we created. Baby mamas, That's right. baby daddies, That's right. That's single mothers, single fathers, That's right. grandma raising the child, That's right. granddad raising the child. That's ordeal. Divorce, separation, all that is ordeal. Yes. Right. I'm talking about God's ideal. Yes. When he looked down from heaven, this is what he wanted to see. One man That's right. with one woman that's right. producing one set of children. That's right. I know that's not the norm because statistics prove that 85% of the families in America don't look like God's ordeal, ideal, but look like our ordeal. That's right. That's right. What do we do with that? One man, one woman, one set of children. That was God's idea for the family. This is how God intended the institution he created to function properly. Somebody said God's the manufacturer. Which means he decides how something should operate. He decided how your body's going to operate. He decided how your mind's going to operate. He decided how marriage will operate, and he decided how family will operate. That's right. If we try to deviate from that, what you'll have, if you try to deviate from what the manufacturer inquired or intended for a product to operate in, it causes the product to what? Malfunction. That's right. We see malfunctioning families, malfunctioning marriages, because we decide not to do God's idea. But the function in our ordeal. Yeah. Right. Everything we see in many homes today is not the idea of God. In this series, I want to emphasize God's idea for family. In the hopes of helping some single person, those of you watching online, those of you who might be in this church today, live out God's ideal, or to implant something in us, because we ain't do it God's way. I don't think many of us in here, we, we can't say we have the ideal family. I know I ain't the only one. No. We don't have the ideal family. Amen. But at least we can instill that in our children, so that the next generation coming in is filled, this church is filled, and the church across America is filled with what God looks down and see a uh, man and woman. I got one clap in the back, man. Like, this is some crazy. Lord have mercy. They're fighting against God's idea. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what I want. Yes, Lord. So I'm going to teach from that. I'm going to give you God's idea. That's all I can give you. I can give you God's idea. We're not going to glorify the ordeal. That's right. That's right. That's good. Y'all want me to glorify the ordeal? No. I want to glorify God's ideal. I know we don't look like it. I'll keep emphasizing it. I know we don't. I don't. Your pastor is in a blended family. That's right. That's right. So I'm not bringing this forth as judgment or condemnation. I'm telling you what God's original tent was to help a single person. 
and to help the generation to come. That they don't have to settle for what's being considered the norm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good. Better homes equals better society. Better society equals a better world. A better world. A better world. And how many of y'all want to live in a better world? It starts having better families. And one of the ingredients, or the ingredients to a better family, is doing it God's way. Amen. Hear me. You want our marriage to function properly, we got to do it God's way. We want to raise our children properly, we got to do it God's way. Any other way will lead to malfunction. Not Dr. Spock, but God. I'm passionate about family. If I don't know what I've been called to, uh, people may question my call and what I've been called to be. One thing I do know is I'm called to bring the message of family to the nation. Amen. To not only speak it, but model it. Amen. That might not ever get me famous, not make, get me celebrated, but at least my daughters can look me in the face and say, this brother tried to be the greatest father he can be and to be the greatest husband he can be. If they never put my name on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or celebrate me on TV, that is enough for me. I might not know anything else, but I do know my purpose and call is to be a great father and a great husband. So, this series is the hope to touch and help every single person and the generation to come. And helping those of us who are living out the ordeal. Because what we'll do is, what we'll do is, we're, we're not living the ordeal family. We got blended families, single mamas, single daddies. Well, it's a mess. Let's just live it. No, no, no. We still have to make the necessary adjustments to get as close to God's word ideal as we possibly can. Don't just settle for how with your family. Well, we like this, and you do you, I do me. We no, no, no. We still have to make the necessary adjustments, the most adjustments that we can to make our family resemble what God wants us to look like. So this is what the series is. So I have to give you this information because information that we get today through the word of God is called truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. How many free families do we want to see in this nation today? Come on, give God some praise. Now, let's start our message. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. I told you Genesis is going to be the catalyst for this message today. And I want you to see some things. I'm going to show you God's idea. When he wanted a man and woman to get together, I'm going to show you the necessary process, ladies and gentlemen. I'm helping some single people on here. This is the process. Some divorcee, I'm showing you the process that you got to go through, all right? That God intended for you to go through. So let's see this real quick. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Look, look what the Bible says. New Living Translation. Then the Lord, God, formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostril. And the man became a living person. Oh my goodness. The Lord God formed the man from where? What's the dust of the ground? What is that? Dirt. He formed him out of dirt. Right? And he breathed the breath of life into this man's nostril. And the man became a living person. So let me drop my first point on you for the morning. Uh, every family should begin with a breathed on brother. That's good. That's good. That's good. Glory. Amen. Amen. Every family should begin with a breathed on brother. This means, what a breathe, breathe on means? This means a saved, spirit-filled brother who follows Jesus. A saved, spirit-filled brother who follows Jesus. So let me just say this. 
by deductive reasoning. By deductive reasoning. God breathed on dirt and caused this brother to be a living person. What if he never would have breathed on his brother? What would that brother have been? He would have been what? Dirt. And ladies and gentlemen, a lot of our homes are dirty because we got hooked up to brothers that haven't been breathed on. Y'all right. not hearing me this morning. He has to be breathed on. He has to have God's breath on it. That word breathe. He said he's breathed the breath of life. You know that word? That word is the breaths. The pesh, the breast, breaths of life. So it's more than one thing. It's more than one thing. It's two. It's plural. So he gave him a natural breath to breathe, right? And then he gave him something spiritual. So when he breathed on him, he not only empowered his lungs, he empowered the person by putting his spirit in him. That's right. The ruach of God was pushed or put on side inside of that man. That's right. So if any family is going to function properly, it needs a breathed on brother. I wouldn't try to be a husband. Let me say it again. I could not be a husband and deal with a woman without God being breathed on. I, I do. I got any brothers in the house? There's no way. No, 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 no. Not like no, 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 no. Especially today's sister. I need to be breathed on. Do I got any real brothers in the place? Anybody watching online? You better have God's breath on you. So a family begins with a breathed on brother. But look at this, brother. Look, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 50. I'm going through this. Because not only do we see that it starts with a breathed on brother, but look what he says that he does with a breathed on brother. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Let's look at that real quick. He says, the Lord placed this breathed on brother in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned this breathed on brother, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat this fruit, you will surely die. That's right. What we see in this text. So not only... God's or idea family begins with a breathe on brother. We see in the text that breathe on brothers is given two things. What is a breathe on brother given? Purpose and parameters. Every breathed on brother. I'm not talking about every brother. I said every breathed on brother is given purpose from God and parameters from God. Right. Somebody say purpose. Purpose is your call. It's what God has called you to do. That's your purpose. Everybody in here has a purpose. Everybody in here has a purpose. And you've been called to a specific, to be a specific answer to a problem in the world. That's, right. That's purpose. You've been called to a specific problem. You are the answer to a problem in this world. That's right. Stop looking for God to fix it. God says, I created you as an instrument in which I was going to fix that thing. That's right. And guess what? How do I know what I've been called to? If you are irritated by a problem, that's the problem you was called to answer. I'm tired of all this mess in the church. God called you to come in that church and stop, take all that mess out. I'm tired of families falling apart. God called you to be an answer for that. You are an answer to the problem. That's what purpose is. Purpose is a call on your life from God. And God took Adam and placed him in the garden to tend it and watch over it. That's his purpose. I want you to, what I gave you, I want you to watch over it. I want you to protect it. I want you to build it. That means I'm leaving you in this spot. But every time I come back, I want that next spot to look like this spot. Right. Y'all not hearing me. I want you to take this Eden and I want you to spread Eden all over the world. Right. Eden was never meant to be in one place. That's right. it, was, it was Adam's job to tend, to keep, to cultivate, to cause, to grow. That's right. That was his purpose. That was God's plan for his life. God gave the brother some work. Oh, it got real quiet. 
in the sanctified place. Before the fall, he was working. He gave him this job. And notice in the text, Larry, it didn't say he was getting paid for it. He said, if you do this for me, I'm going to give you some money. No, 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 no. Adam already had everything he needed. <laughs> Adam, Adam, Adam had everything he made, need, right? So he didn't give him this job to, to get him paid. He didn't give him this work to, so he could make money. Because there was no poverty in the garden. Like, matter of fact, watch this. Most of us make money to fight poverty. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. The majority of families in this nation go to work at a job that you can't stand with people you can't stand, Amen. under employees or employers that you can't stand. Why? To fight against poverty. Amen. That was never God's intent. That was the, God wanted us in purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Watch this. God put him to work so he can have purpose because purpose will always lead to prosperity. Purpose will always lead to prosperity. Good. If you're in purpose, God is leading you to a road of prosperity. When you know what God has assigned you to do, it's going to lead to prosperity. That's good. So he didn't give him work so he could get paid. He gave him work as purpose. Because when you get in purpose, you don't have to go looking for money. Money goes looking for you. So he gave him purpose. He gave him parameters. He told, he gave them the do's and the don'ts. A brave young brother lives his life under the word of God, obeying the do's and the don'ts. I have parameters. There's some things I know that if I want to live a successful life, I just can't do. Other brothers can do it because they're not breathed on. I'm breathed on. I can't do that. I can't go where you go. I know y'all like to watch the women slide down the pole. I can't go there. I can't watch what you watch on TV. I can't. There's parameters. So he gave the brother purpose and he gave the brother parameters. Now, watch this. After the brother was breathed on, after the brother was in purpose and had parameters, then God pulled out a female partner. Yes, yes, that's good. Y'all didn't catch that. He was breathed on. He was given purpose. He was walking in parameters. When he was doing that, then God gave him a female partner. Purpose, purpose, parameters. Partner. Not partner, purpose, and then parameters. No. Purpose, parameters, equals partner. And I, I have to put emphasis on this. Female partner. Y'all know? We, we are in 2023. Female partner. He didn't say male partner. He says female partner. I don't know what your whole theological construct what it is about homosexual marriage. We could talk about it all day. I'm just telling you, God said, I told you I can't argue with his idea. That's what he wanted. I, don't get mad at me. And I am a firm believer. If God said it, then I'm rolling with it. I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna apologize for what God said, but I'm sorry God said it like that. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry he said that. I'm sorry. I wish it could be no, I wish it nothing. He know better. I ain't wishing nothing. He's smarter than me. He knows it works. He knows how human beings are supposed to function. So I'm going to always follow on the side of God. So don't ever try to go have me go against God. You may say, well, I feel this way. I don't, I'm telling you, I, I understand how you feel. But I'm going with this. So if you don't want to hear this, don't come to me. I'll never forget. 
I was working for AirTran at the time before we transitioned to Southwest, and his brother said, uh, I'm getting married. I said, you getting married? I would love for you to do our marriage counseling. I heard you were a pastor, and I, I see how you move at work, and you know, you, just, you know, walk in integrity and all that stuff. I would love for you to do our wedding. I said, yeah, who is she? No, it's he. I said, excuse me? It's he. I, I said, oh, okay, um, yeah, that can't be me. Um, that's not me. Good. Oh, why? The Bible says he formed a woman out of the side. Not a man. Because there's more than one rib, right? So he could have put a rib on this side, gave him a, a, a woman, and then gave him a rib on this side, gave him a man, and say, Adam, you choose. Yeah, on, That's not what he did. He says, I know what you need, and you need a female. I, I didn't mean to get there. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to get there. No, I don't apologize. That's the word of God. So purpose, parameters, female partner. Hear me, single brothers. Purpose, know what God wants you to do, not just what you want to do. Amen. Right. I mean, your plan is not always God's purpose. That's right, man. That's right. So when I said purpose, I'm not talking about your plan. I'm talking about what did God tell you to do? Yeah. What is God's call over your life? That's right. That's right. See, my plan, my plan may give me some money. It may bring me towards some money. But my purpose will give me fulfillment. Because all of y'all idolize Beyonce and Jay-Z. Y'all think they're the, better, the greatest things since sliced bread. I wish my marriage was like that. You don't even know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't even know what's going on. And I'm here to tell you, Jay-Z ain't in purpose. He got a plan. But he don't have purpose. Purpose only comes from you fulfilling God's work and God's plan for your life. Many are the plans of a man, but it's God's purpose that shall prevail. So purpose, parameters. Then he pulled out. I need y'all to show this. And that leads us to our text today. This is what I want to get to. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Look what it says. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper suitable for him. It's not good for the man to be alone. Now, I want y'all to see this. Then the Lord God said, it's not good for, be, for the man to be alone. What man? To be alone. Courtney, they're going to get this tomorrow. They're going to get this tomorrow. And some of them will get it today. I know Davida and all of them are going to get it today. But some, they're going to have to wait. They're going to sit at home. Dad, it's not. Oh! That's good. 12 o'clock tomorrow. They're going to be at work, working. That's what pastor said. They're going to hit you tomorrow. Watch this. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man. What man? The man. That's right. The man. That's right. This specific man. The breed on man. Right. Y'all not hearing me? Yeah. This breed on brother who has purpose, who has set parameters, that's the brother that don't need to be alone. Yeah. All those other jokers, leave him alone. Y'all not hearing me? Right. Y'all not hearing me this morning? That's right. Any other brother that's not breed on, that's not purpose, that all have parameters, leave them alone until they get breathed on, until they get purpose, until they get parameters. Amen. Amen. Leave them alone. He says, this brother, this type of brother should not be alone. Amen. The text says that God made this brother a helper. This brother should have somebody to help him. Does that mean that this brother was inadequate? No. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so, if God called from heaven and told, said, Pastor Corey, I'm going to use you to break down this church. You can break down this church. I want you to take down this whole church. Take stack up all the chairs, put them in the back, right. load up all the equipment here, load up all that. 
How many of y'all think I can do that? I can do that. But wouldn't it be easier? Y'all not hearing me. It doesn't make me inadequate. It just says things would be easier if I had help. But man was not inadequate. He was still in purpose, still walking. He could have did everything. He was calling names out, dealing with all that. He was not inadequate. It just makes things better. Sisters, you are not inadequate if you don't have a man. But the Bible says two are always better than what? One. So this breathe on Brother Courtney. He said, it's not good for him to be alone. He can do it by himself, but it's not good. He can do it, it's not good. He might wear himself out. He gonna struggle everybody else in the garden has somebody to roll with. Lions had the lionesses. Elephants had the elephants. Had the elephants. They all had something. Adam was the only one chilling by himself. And God says, no, that ain't good. Everybody else has help. He needs some help. So God, put the brother asleep and said, I'm going to get him help. This text says God made him a helper suitable for him. Now the term helper ladies is not a demeaning term. See, when y'all see help in the Bible, a lot of our sisters, especially our unsaved sisters, they see help as, oh, you're trying to call me a butler. A maid. God want me to be a help? I need some help. I know God ain't calling me a slave. I ain't nobody's slave. He says you're a help. And ladies and gentlemen, the same word that he called y'all. See, he did two things. He shared his title as father with men. And he shared his title as helper with women. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Can I put some Bible on it? Psalms 33, verse 20. Psalms 33, verse 20. Psalms 33, verse 20. Put that on the screen for me. Psalms 33, verse 20 says, Our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help. Goodness. Oh, y'all still don't believe me? I got some more receipts. Psalms chapter 70, verse 5. But I'm afflicted and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not deliver. You are my what? Help. Does that mean God is our butler? Does that mean God is our slave? Does that mean God is our servant? No. He is help. That means he comes into our life to enhance. Sisters, you can come into a brief old brother's life and enhance his life. So let me pause right here and parenthetically digress and warn all my single ladies that when you cry out to God for a husband, God is hearing you cry Lord, send me someone that needs my help. Y'all not hear me? When you cry out, Lord, where my husband at? When he gonna come? God hears, Lord, I'm ready to help. Amen. That's what he hears. I'm ready to help. Amen. Now, when I say someone to help, don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about y'all going into a store and building a bear. God didn't call you to build a brother. God has called you to help a brother build. Right. Y'all not hearing me this morning. That's good. That's good. So he's never going to call you to come in his life. Now you got to shape him and make, him, make this man and mold him to what you want him to be. No, to help him build. Yes. Right. Yes. Somebody say help. help. So, so, so this means, ladies and gentlemen, brothers, we should not regulate our search for a wife to see all she have to do is be shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, and fine. No, 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 no. We need to know if she can help. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Sisters, 
I know y'all looking for the finest man and want to make sure he got a place of employment. <laughs> but you also have to be critical on, can I help? Okay, y'all don't believe me. Uh, Larry, Sharina, Larry and Sharina, come here for a second. Larry and Sharina. Hold on to that for me. Sharina, Sharina, what you got in your hand? Some nails. Larry, what you got? A hammer. Larry, Larry got a hammer. Uh, Sharina got nails, all right? She's gifted with nails. He's gifted with a hammer. So I'm gonna play God for a minute. So I'm gonna put on my God voice. Larry, Larry Martin, I need you to build something great for me. So I have gifted you this hammer to help you with my instruction to build. Amen. He has his hammer. Sharina. It was Pritchett, right? Sharina Pritchett. It was Pritchett. Sharina Pritchett. I have called you to do great things for me. I have called you to help a brother build. So I have given you a gift of nails so that you can assist in building what I desire for you to build. That's real. Watch this. So he got his assignment. I told you he's breathed on. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to hear from God if he was not breathed on. So he's been breathed on. He got purpose. He set parameters, right? Guess what? In his dating process, what is he looking for? As fine as he thinks Serena is. It's beautiful. Look, he's looking at her now. I mean, I might be getting between the summary. <laughs> he has to look for more than just is she good in the bed? All right. is, I mean, is, is, do she make me laugh? Uh -huh. You know, there's got to be more than that. Uh -huh. Can she help me build? That's right. uh, Patricia, come here for a second. Brother Larry has a hammer in his hand. And we understand in the natural what goes with a hammer. Nails. Nails. Okay. Sister Patricia. She's another sister on the scene. She would like to get married. Y'all see this? These ain't nails. Yes. These are wretched. Hmm. God instructed her to build. Matter of fact, more specifically, God inspired or instructing her that she needs to tighten some things up in, in this world and loose some things up. Mary can't help her. But what will happen is sisters like this will hook up with a brother that's a hammer and then he can't do or be able to help her do what she need to do and she can't help him. So now they fight with each other. Why you can't be more like a Oh, why you can't be a wrench? Why you have to be this? All you want to do is handle stuff. I'm tired of you. And you looking at her. See, it's really easier if you were just a nail. But it's almost easy if you don't know. No, 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 no. God didn't make her that way. So in the dating process, I'm trying to figure out who has the nails. All right. That's, That's good. good. That's good. That's good. Who has the nails? So in their dating process, Larry's gonna hook up with Sharina. All right. Sharina's gonna hook up with Larry because she can help. That's right. All right. And he builds something. And guess what? I love God. Because what God does is. Even if Sharina was not clear on her purpose, 
The moment she hooks up with Larry and they start building something, y'all not hearing me. She will find out, oh God. See, this is what you meant from Jump Street. I can see it clearly. But when you decide to help somebody, you end up helping yourself. Y'all not hearing me. So, but do that leave Patricia alone? No, because I, before this service started, I talked to another brother. Come here, Larry. Come on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she's not even confused. Lord, you told me his name was Larry. This brother, this brother got a hammer. He ain't got one. Lord, but I'm going to trust you. You said Larry. No, this Larry. And I gave him something. I, did, yeah, I gave him something right. earlier. So these, fit with these. Perfect fit. Yes, they fit with these. These go together. These are the ones that go together. Not a hammer. Right. Right. Sorry, bro, that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so watch this. Because Patricia didn't decide to go with the hammer, it left God that opportunity to bring in what really was for hers. I know this thing. What we do is we hook up with the wrong person and you miss out on what God really wants you to have. And you live a life in misery yeah. because you hooked up with a hammer instead of what God has intended for you to have. Yeah. Now this, this couple, they can tighten and loosen things up. Yes, they can tighten some things up for God, loose some things for God. They can do that together. What they can do, they can build some stuff for God. Yeah. They can build together yeah. for God. Yeah. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. So the Lord God, let's go to the, real quick. I got to roll. I'm running out of time. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21, 22. I'm almost done. I got to give you this and I'm going to let you go. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Theo muses. On the spot revelation. So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon a man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And then after he closed up the flesh, what he did? And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Oh, that's good right there. Because the revelation in that is, brothers, if you want a woman, God has to be allowed to close up your flesh. Y'all not hear me? Y'all not hear me? A closed flesh gets the wife. Closed flesh. And, and, and we can't look to see most brothers say, you know what? If I get married, Marriage will close my flesh. I might not, see, if I could just hook up with her, I won't desire all the other women in the world. That's a lie. You got to allow God to close up your flesh. So he fashioned the woman, the rib which he had taken from the man, and brought her to the man. The woman is the help that the family needs. This means there's something a wife as to a family that cannot be duplicated yeah. or replicated. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. Yeah. There's something that a wife adds to a family that cannot be duplicated or replicated. Mm -hmm. What is it? I'm so glad you asked. The woman has been given four significant things. And there's many things I could do. I'm doing four today. That she brings help to a family with. Which means there are four significant things a woman should bring to every family. Let's start with number one, and I'm rolling. Somebody say favor. Favor. 
I brought the obvious first. I should have. I was gonna say it for last, but it's just as obvious. She brings favor. Amen. How do you know, Pastor? See, because the Bible tells me so. Look what it says. Proverbs eighteen verse twenty-two. Proverbs eighteen verse twenty-two. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Amen. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Remember, I told you. He looked at man and said, "What?" It's not good. Right. What is good? The woman. Y'all not hearing me. <laughs> the wife is the good thing. So he was missing something good in the garden, but he'll find that thing good in his wife. Yeah. Yeah. He finds a good thing. Yes, Lord. Now, notice the text says, he who finds a wife, not a woman. Because I was sitting there, I was sitting there I'm like, this don't make any sense. Because based on what I'm seeing in the text, a man has to search to find something. If he want to find his wife, he got to search. But why would I have to search when women, especially black women, outnumber brothers seven to one? That's right. So it shouldn't be that hard to find a woman. He says, I'm not telling you to find a woman. I said to find a wife. That means she's wifey material before I make her my wife. She got to be wifey material operating as a wife before I even show up on the scene. He who finds a wife, he didn't say find a woman. Women are, hard, are easy to find. It's the wife that you got to search for. So he says, when you find that good thing, you find favor. What do favor mean? Favor is, is this supernatural thing that God will bring into your life. Uh, it's, a, it's unmerited. It's, it's a grace that comes upon you because you have a wife in your life. There's something that she brings to the table. When you have a good wife, it, she brings that to the table. And that is enhancement. Somebody say enhancement. Enhancement, enhancement breeds multiplication. A wife brings multiplication to your life. She multiplies. Y'all heard Dr. Miles Monroe say this before. Dr. Miles Monroe said this. If you bring a woman groceries, she'll turn it around and give you a dinner. You, bring, you give that woman sperm, she'll turn it around and give you a child. She multiplies, which also means if you give her problems, she'll multiply that and give you hell. Do I get any eight mans in here? <laughs> she multiplies whatever you give her. Come on now. So that's why, brothers, we got to be careful what we give our wives. Because what you're receiving in your home could be what you've been giving her. So if I want to change what I've been receiving from her, I got to, I got to change what I've been giving her. Because God made her to multiply. She incubates everything. She incubates. She has a nurturing spirit. She incubates it. And she puts it out there, whatever you give her. So she brings favor. She brings favor into your life. But not only that, I'm rolling. Say cover. Say cover. Where did he take the woman from? The rib. The river, the rib serves as what? Cover. It's a cover. Yeah. It covers my heart. And all of my vital organs is covered by my rib. It's a protective, it's a protective piece of my bones. Yes. Right. To cover my heart, to cover my liver, to cover my lungs, he gave us ribs. A wife comes into your life to cover your heart. She covers that. She covers that. She is a cover. But not only that, I'm, I'm proving through scripture. She covers it another way as well. Um, when you get a chance, read 1 Samuel chapter 25. Because in 1 Samuel chapter 25, we introduce this brother named Nabal. Y'all familiar with Nabal? Nabal was this brother in the Bible who had all the houses. I mean, God blessed him tremendously. He had a land. He had over 500 sheep. He had, uh, he had soldiers with him. He was balling. Nabal, Nabal was balling. And David was in between this war, right? So David 
was going to battle back and forth. And it was at night. So he sent some of his men to go to Nabal. He said, Nabal, I know you're balling and everything. My, 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 my people are tired. They need some food. Could you do me a favor? Could you send some food? Could you send some clothes? Could you send some supplies? We'll be ever so grateful. I'll speak God's favor. This King David, talking to one of the people in the kingdom. Come on, if you do this for me, and then, you know, I'll bless you. You know what Nabal said? Uh -uh. Who is David? Yeah. 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 Man, please. He ain't getting nothing. Yeah. He better go with it. He told David, go with it. You do what you got to do. So David got word. And you know David is a worshiper, but he a killer too. Yeah. David don't play. He, David was no punk. He worshiped and he kills. So he got word that Nabal said, forget David. David said, he said, forget who? He said, who? Oh, okay. He playing that? So David's gathered a hundred of his soldiers and said, you're going to take, take Nabal out. So he's on his way. One of the people came to Abigail, Nabal's wife, and says, David asked for some stuff. And Nabal said, forget David. He just said, forget David. Threw a middle finger at David. All that. Forget David. And uh, she said, oh, what did he say? While he's saying that, she's putting food together. She stirring that pot of collard greens. She's making that macaroni and cheese, getting some blankets together, and she got riding on the horse. See, that's why, brother, you need to ride or die, sister. She, she, she covered. She get, she get on that horse. She riding that horse all the way to David to intercept the army. She gets in front of David. She falls to her knees and she says, "David, I know my husband is acting like his name because that word Nabal, that name Nabal means foolish. But I want you to forget what he did." Take this stuff I'm giving you to forgive my husband. He didn't know what he was doing. So, so, so I'm giving you this food. I'm giving it a shelter. David looked at her and said, oh my goodness. Can, can I some, show you the scripture what she said? Let me see what she said, what David said to her. Look, he said, for I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, who has kept me from hurting you, that if you had not hurried out to meet me, not one of Nabal's men will still be alive tomorrow morning. That sister covered her husband. Now, you know what 2023 ladies would have did? They would have came to the house and said, he just flipped David the bird and told him where to go. Where he at? Where the boy at? You stupid idiot! How dare you? I can't believe it. Now you got me in trouble because you were so stupid. You are so dumb. I can't believe mama told me not to marry you. <laughs> So she busy, and guess what happened? While she too busy arguing, y'all gotta hear me. Y'all families and marriages are dying because y'all too busy arguing instead of fighting the real war. So she, instead of covering her husband, she argued, it is, it is. And all the men would have came in and wiped him and her. Look at the text. Who has kept me from hurting you? You. This sister says, I'm gonna jump ahead of it. I'm gonna cover my husband, even his ignorance. Even when he's wrong. And I need some sisters in this day and age. Even when your husband wrong, you cover him in prayer. You fall down on your knees and say, Lord, forgive him, for you don't know what he's doing. He messed up. But I believe that you can push greatness out of him still. Amen. Somebody say cover. But not only does a sister bring cover to a family, she also brings hate. It's been said that no one can love like a sister. And that is the truth, because women love with everything. I, I tell people this all the time. The mind of a woman is like spaghetti, and the mind of a man is like a waffle. If you look at spaghetti, if I pick up one piece of spaghetti, it's going to pull all the spaghetti up, because everything is connected, right? If I pull out a waffle, you see what? Compartments. A man thinks in compartments. That means we can focus on one thing and one thing at a time. That's, right. That's why when you ladies could the pay on this bill I'll be paid, this guy be taken out, this guy be doing said, hold, 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 hold. <laughs> Give me one thing to conquer. That's right. That's right. Brothers are warriors by nature. We need one thing to conquer. But you're trying to give us everything because you think like spaghetti. Because everything is connected. That's right. That's why a sister could be in the car driving doing her makeup, on the phone, 
hitting the kids at the same time because everything is connected. Brothers can't do that. We, we, we try to do all that. We're going to swerve off into the lane because we think in compartments. Women think it's like spaghetti. Everything's connected. So, so when a woman loves, oh my goodness, she loves with everything. She don't know. See, see, see. She, she don't know how to give a little piece. She gives all. She gives every ounce of her soul, her body, her spirit goes into it. We think in compartments. So watch this, ladies. Brothers, we have a sex compartment. It has nothing to do with love. A woman, when she gives her body, she can't help because everything is connected. I thought he loved me. I gave him my body. I thought, no, no, no. He had that in a compartment. That's just something he do. That's why a brother will say this all the time. You cheated on me. I can't believe the lady. I, I can't believe you cheated on me. Don't you love me? I do love you. Y'all looking at me crazy. I do love you. I was just sleeping with her. But I love you. And he means it. Because he's separating compartments. Got a sex compartment and all that. Doesn't make it right? Absolutely not. Because a, a brief on brother sets parameters. I won't allow myself to go in this square without my wife. Gotta hear me. I'm not gonna allow myself to go in this compartment without my wife. This compartment is not reserved for pornography. This compartment is not reserved for uh, 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 masturbation. That's right. That's good. That's good. This compartment is only made for my wife. I set parameters. So a woman gives everything. When she loves, she loves her everything. But also, when a sister hates, she hates with everything. She don't know how to separate stuff. Watch this. You as a man, you as a man hurt her. You, just you, Pookie, you hurt her. But because everything is connected, every man potentially will have to pay the price because everything's connected because of Pookie. Y'all looking at me now, you know what I'm talking about? And when a sister hates, she hates for real. How would I know? Because she was built that way. Look what it says. And I will make you and the woman, talking to the devil, hate each other. And your seed and her seed will hate each other. He will crush your head and you will crush his heel. I will put hatred between the woman and the devil. The woman was made to hate. That's right. But she was made to hate the devil. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But the enemy has been so crafty in getting that woman to turn her hate towards her spouse. To get her hate to turn it towards a man. That is misguided artillery. Your hate that you were supposed to reserve for the devil, if you unleash that on a man, you will crush a man. That's right. Amen. I ain't got no amens in here. That's right. She can, there's no pain that you can feel that, I mean, we can, as men, we can go out to this community and deal with everybody hating on us. Well, whatever, man. But with your wife, yes. your spouse, Amen. say something. Can emasculate you, can cut you down. Yes. Whoo! That hate was not reserved for your spouse. That hate was reserved for the devil. Let me tell you how it was supposed to work. Okay, watch this. Remember when Adam and Eve messed up and God came to Adam and said, Adam, what happened? Adam said, uh, is this woman that you gave me? <laughs> then he went to the work. What happened, Eve? Eve says, the devil. Y'all missed it. Adam said, it was that woman you gave me. She said, it was the devil. Because God gave her, okay, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. A woman could be in the mall and can tell when that sister she hate walk in there. He, she in here somewhere. She's, I, I gotta feel her spirit. Hmm, she in here, I can't stand her guts. God has given her the ability to identify what she hates. She was supposed to identify the devil, go back to the man, tell the man where the devil is at so that man can attack with his power and his authority. That's right, that's right, that's right. Amen. 
Instead of the woman coming to him, we ain't got enough money. No, this is what you should do. The devil's been attacking us in our finances. Okay, I know what to do now. As a man, I know where the attack is coming from. So I, as a man, use all my, my warrior spirit to go against what the enemy is coming against our family with. Right. That's good. That's good. He needs you to help. We need you to help us identify the enemy. David didn't rec- I'm not David. Adam didn't recognize who the enemy was. But he had a wife who did. That's, right. That's what the enemy is. Go get him. That's what the enemy is. Go get him. That's right. That's right. She brings a hate. So, so now that I have a wife, now I can hate what she hates. I can hate what the devil is trying to do to our family, do to her, do to me. I can hate. She brings hate to the family. Not only that, last but not least, I'm done. Dominion and authority. A wife brings dominion and authority to the family. She helps in that area of dominion and authority. How you know, Pastor C? It's right here on the screen. So God created a man in his own image and likeness of God created. He, male and female, created them and blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and finish earth and subdue it and have dominion. Somebody say have dominion. Ladies and gentlemen, the dominion that God describes is a dominion that is realized when a husband and wife come together. So that means Sharina and Larry were supposed to kill some stuff. There's some things that God has called them together to conquer, to come together to demolish. That means that Larry and, and Patricia was called to kill some things together. There's some things they were supposed to accomplish together. There's some things they're supposed to get together, walk in dominion authority. God didn't just put y'all together and have babies. He put y'all together and have dominion. Do y'all hear me? He put y'all together to have dominion. So when a woman, when a wife, excuse me, a wife is in a family, she brings favor. She brings cover. She brings hate. And she brings dominion and authority. Father, we thank you. We honor you today. We thank you right now for this word. It was tight, but Lord, it was right. It was a tough pill to swallow, but we thank you, Lord, for helping us swallow it. Washing it down into our very spirits, into our souls. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for making the necessary home improvements by shining the light of what men should be doing in the family and what women, wives, should be doing in the family so that we can make the necessary home improvements. We love you. We adore you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. If you got anything out of this teaching, if you got something online, put it. God something past the seat. Come on, put that right there in the conversation. I got something past the seat. Yes, 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 yes. It's offering time. I want you to get your best offering in your hand. Remember, there's four ways you can give to the truth. You can give by cash app, dollar sign, Truth Church ATL. You can give right here, 404-205-8883. You can text any amount to that number right there. Also, ladies and gentlemen, you can give on our website at www.truthchurchatl.org. And also, if you have the Truth Church app, and I know many of you do, the Truth Church app on your phone, you can give during a giving section. And if you just don't want to do any of that, we do have that scan to give. It's right there on the screen, scan to give. You just scan your phone, it'll take you directly to our giving page. Scan to give, right to our giving page, and you'll be able to give that way. Those are the ways you can sow into this ministry to help this ministry do exactly what this ministry needs to do. If you have a monetary gift, I'm sorry, if you have cash in your hand, you just old fashioned, you like carrying those bills in your pocket. If that's you, lift your hand up. We have offering envelopes that we'd love to give you so you can give that way. If you have an offering envelope, lift up your hand. We'll give that offering envelope to you. All right. Let's bless it. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We thank you for this opportunity to sow good seed into good ground that it may produce that great 
an awesome harvest in our life. You said when we give, it shall come back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So we thank you, Lord, for the overflow happening in our life. We love you. We adore you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. All right, stand to your feet for dismissal. Just one bit of information for you. I want to remind everybody there will be no Bible study on this coming Thursday. No Bible study on this coming Thursday. So we'll be off this Thursday. We'll be back in full effect the following following Thursday. But uh, how many of y'all enjoyed that bringing on Bible study? Amen. Me and my brother enjoyed doing it. Uh, we're going to do it again pretty soon. So just be on the lookout for that. All right. But this coming Thursday, there will be no Bible study. We'll be back on the following Thursday. Our hearts and minds are clear. Our hearts and minds are clear. Let's look to the Lord and be dismissed. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify your holy and majestic name. We thank you, Lord, for everything that went forth in the midst of service to make this service great. We are appreciative for the opportunity to be ushered into worship by the worship team. We thank you for the instruments, the music that goes forth to help us in our worship, to enhance our worship experience. We are so grateful for that. We thank you for the prayer that went forth to kick off the service using that mighty vessel to bring forth that prayer. And we thank you for the word of God that will bring forth edification, correction, and comfort to our very lives. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for being an awesome and wonderful God. And we know when we leave this place, we don't leave your presence. For you promise to be with us always, even to the end of days. We love you. We adore you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Repeat these words after me in the right place. At the right time. So with the right God, with the right people, somebody say, I know that's right. Go in peace, and we love you, but God loves you best, and the truth that you know will set you free. God bless you.